Hello, Jerry here with Season 3, Episode 29 of Ask Jerry Tashwa. If you'd like to ask me a question, simply go to my website, which is www.tashwa.com, T-A-C-H-O-I-R.com, and in the upper right-hand corner is a Contacts tab. Just click on that, fill out the information, ask your question, and perhaps we'll do one of these videos. Uh, and also, if you'd please subscribe, that helps us out a lot. Uh, my question today comes from Keith, and this is kind of a rather long uh, question, but uh, something I think we should get into. Uh, I'm not sure where Keith is from, but anyway. Hi, I recently discovered your videos and find them very interesting and thought-provoking. And then it says, I, as one of the few people, I guess that's referring to me, that have played on at least four companies' vibes, how would you compare the bars of the Musser M55 from the 60s and 70s bars, 1960s, 1970s bars, to the Bergerot, Yamaha, and Adams in regard to tone quality, but also sustain and warmth. If you use the same mallet, your series, for example, on all of them, are some more articulate than others and more overtones, core of the bar, etc. Also, do you have your bars tuned to 440 or 442, since all of those companies, I believe, come standard now at 442. Lastly, are your blue Musser bars, new Musser or old Musser bars that were replated, whatever the process is for the color change, and did that have any impact on the tone of the bars? I know these are all very nerdy questions. I just ordered a four octave vibraphone, and so I'm deciding on some things to adapt while the instrument gets spilt, such as large pedal that swivels for body comfort in the top octaves. Apparently, uh, I'm sorry, appreciate any insight and I apologize for the lack of organized thoughts. And it comes from Keith. I started exploring what companies have the extended range instrument. So I had a student and he actually bought a Yamaha down to sea, an extended range Yamaha, three and a half octave. And unfortunately he was killed in a car accident. So I bought the instrument from the family to help him out. So I did have the Yamaha in my house. And then the, my good friends at Pearl Adams, they brought one of their Adams extended range instruments over for me to work with and try and see if I liked it at all. And to be honest with you, I had these two instruments side by side and I, and I, and I played with, with both of them on and off. The Yamaha to me was, was very, like the, the frame was very wrought iron, kind of, you know, round metal on the side. It just didn't look like a Carnegie Hall type instrument. I mean, it sounded okay. The lower three notes, the fundamental was totally missing. It was a very pingy kind of uh, harmonic-y sound that you would get out of the, the bottom notes. So, so that wasn't really working that well. But just having the extra three notes was, was a pleasure. Now the Adams, the Adams was a little bit better. The sound of the Adams worked for me and, and I played it a lot and I really started liking the Adams instrument. The only thing I didn't like about the Adams instrument, to be honest with you, was, was the frame. The frame was just bulky and heavy and I didn't really care for the look of it. But it was a company that I was really, really considering because A, they're here local in Nashville and uh, I like the people that I'm working with. Uh, so anyway, I was on tour in Italy and I stumbled across a Bergerot instrument. I met some of the people there and they kept saying, Jerry, we'd love for you to play our instruments. And I said, well, look, I'm looking for extended range down to sea. Can you help me out? He says, we will get an instrument to you. Well, this was during COVID and that uh, they shipped an instrument to me and unfortunately due to the transportation issues at that time it was on a boat and it floated around the world for about six months and so i didn't uh, really have the instrument or didn't get it for all for a long time so a couple years ago anyway the instrument did show up and, and i played it and i, I knew I, this this is the one this this is the instrument that I, I like the frame i like the look of it it's a very modern look the bar sounded great the, the lower frequencies had a good fundamental and uh, even though I, I was leaning towards the Adams just because of my relationship, I, for one, only play an instrument that I totally believe in, in the sound and the quality. And to be honest with you, the Bergerol people have been beautiful. They're from France. They, they speak French. My wife speaks French. We got along really well. The good communication. I like them a lot. They like musicians. They want to work with you. So anyway, I decided that I was going to endorse the Bergerol. Now, when I, when I play with my mallets on those three instruments, what I found was 
the Yamaha, I believe, uh, has a similar tuning to the old Deegan instruments. And I never really liked the Deegan instruments because you really had to hit them to get a sound. They never had that muster warmth where you'd hit the bars and you'd just get a nice uh, envelope of sound. Anyway, uh, so it was very similar, <coughs> excuse me, very similar to the Deegan. And again, the bottom three notes just didn't have a good fundamental. Now, the Adams sounded pretty good. I was, I was very comfortable with the sound of the bars of the Adams. Uh, and I was actually going to go that route, but then once I got this Bergeron and I played it, these bars sound to me the closest to what I would have heard on my old M55s. They had that very good, good uh, articulation and warmth in the bars. You know, they speak really well. The sustain is excellent. The dampening mechanism works very well. So, so this is the instrument I highly recommend. Now. Regarding the issue of 440 versus 442, this is the dumbest thing going on ever. We live in the United States. Pianos are tuned to 440, guitars are tuned to 440, synthesizers are tuned to 440, everything is tuned to 440. Why would we have in this country 442 instruments? Don't get it, don't understand it, it just doesn't make sense. All my instruments that I have that I play in this country are tuned to 440. I ask for them when I order them. This Bergerot is 440. Uh, they actually did send me a set of blue bars because that's become kind of my little trademark, having blue bars. Um, and unfortunately they forgot and they tuned it to the European standard of 442, but they made me another set and they shipped it. So I got a 440 uh, blue bar and a 442. And it's good because when I do travel to Europe, a lot of places in Europe, their standards are 442 everywhere. So you gotta play that game. And to me, I do hear a difference. My wife has perfect pitch. She definitely hears a difference. And so it's something that we struggle with all the time. Regarding the blue bars, the Musser blue bars that I had were made fairly recently. They, well, actually, they were made at the LaGrange factory before it moved. So they're pretty good bars. They're not as warm and not as good sounding as my bars from, say, the 70s and 80s. These were probably made uh, somewhere in the 90s, and they sound pretty good overall not as good as I remember. And the process that they do it, it is really not complicated. When they, when they anodize alum, aluminum bars come silver. That's the standard color that it, nothing done to them. It's, just, it's a silver color. To make them gold, they take that silver bar and I, I guess it's dipped. I don't know exactly the process, but it gets dipped into something that has an, uh, an electronic anodization process, which then attaches the, the gold pigment color to the aluminum bars. But underneath this is still silver uh, aluminum. And the same with the blue. So they, they just put one in blue, one in gold, and then silver, they leave it alone. They don't have to do anything to it because that's the natural color. And it doesn't really make a big difference. Now, I had my wife one time when I very first uh, got a set of, of gold bars. She came down and, and, and played, and I played, and I said, which one is this? And she heard that I played the gold bars every time because it had a little bit more of a mellow, softer, rounder sound. And that might have to do with just the weight of the extra material on the bar to give it that. Anyway, she, she knew there was a difference between the gold and silver. I didn't really hear it that much, but, but she picked it every time. So that's my, my beef on the 442 versus 440 and the extended range. Now, when you get into an extended range instrument, the pedal is serious. And I talked about this in another one of my Ask Jerry series. You want a bigger pedal, a little bit wider pedal. And the Bergeron really has a nice pedal. It's wide enough that when I move to the upper end, I can, I can still have enough pedal to hang on to with my foot to, to make it work and, and going down to the lower end, whatever, and it works very well. I don't really like the bar, the, the big metal bar that a lot of companies started using. I just don't like the look of it. I just don't like the feel of it. I, li I like the one simple pedal that has the ability to swivel. I don't allow it to swivel, but I just kind of lean it about 10 degrees towards the high end of the instrument, and, and, that, and that seems to work very well for me. I, th I think I asked, or I'm sorry, answered most of your questions. Um, I'm not sure what instrument you ordered. Uh, if it's a four octave instrument, I would imagine it's probably a Bergerot instrument. To me, three and a half is 
plenty. I, I don't want any more on the upper end. I don't want it to go up to C because I find, to be honest with you, these, these notes here at the high end tend to be like not my favorite notes on the instrument anyway. I, I like the warmth of the lower end. So the, from the lower to about, about here is where I do like probably 80% you know, of my playing. And then I'll, I'll use these notes for articulation and added effects and endings and things like that. So I don't want anything any bigger to four octaves uh, for a couple of reasons. A, that's going to get more weight. It's going to be a bigger instrument. Uh, and again, I just don't like those notes upper. So three and a half octave for me is absolutely perfect. I am so thrilled with this instrument. I'm so thrilled with this company. Uh, I feel bad that my relationship with Musser ended after 50 years because, I mean, they, they were, like I said at one time, the pinnacle and the great part of, of that company. Uh, unfortunately, they've, uh, things have changed and there's a lot of other companies now making some really great instruments. There's only about three that I can think of right now that are making extended range instruments, and that's Bergerot, Yamaha, and Adam. So anyway, uh, that should have answered your question, and I, and I hope you, uh, I gave you the information you were looking for. I wish you the best, and continue playing, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.